When you see a sailboat sailing off into the distance, is the wind pushing it or pulling it? Hello everyone, Sammy's here with me. This is now a thing. I made sails. What do we have here? We have, you know, the mainsail, we got a staysail, and then back here we got a nice big Genoa, like a big one. But if this was such a simple concept to explain, then we wouldn't need to explain it because it's self-explanatory. When you look at a sailboat that's fully rigged, has everything going for it, it'd all be simple, but it's not. It's really complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of interplay between different parts of everything. What is easier than trying to explain how sails work than by using an entire full rigged cutter sailboat? One simple sail. And by the way, yes, these are sheets. Uh, they're now sails. What we're going to be looking at is what makes a sail, what, how does a sail work, just everything about a sail. And we're going to look at a sail as an individual unit. And then from there, we'll then be able to extrapolate all that data and knowledge into a full rig and, and just everything and all the stuff put together. So let's take a look at a single sail. So let's clear all this out because this starts getting confusing when you have all this going on and we'll look at just one sail. The standard sail on a four aft rigged boat is going to have three sides. There are those beautiful boats called gaff rigs which have four sided sails and while they're beautiful, they're not very common. So we're not gonna go into the nomenclature of a four sided sail. We're gonna stick to three because let's keep it simple. Looking at a three sided sail. So you're going downwind. <sighs> Wind's blowing on it. That wind pressure is going to push the sail. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple there. When you're going upwind, it's not going to work. Let's look at how it all happened. Yeah, I was going to hyperventilate. We're going to use a fan. So the side with the snowflakes is always going to be pointing towards the bow or towards the front of the boat or in the direction the boat is going. And then the completely white side that has no print on it will be facing towards the back part of the boat. Okay. So let's, uh, let's transition back. This will be going towards the front. This side will be going towards the back. So in this case, the boat is going downwind. Here's a little fan. It's easy to visualize that. And you're going downwind. So you just have the sail up and over, and it's just catching the wind. And that wind pressure is just going to push it right along. It's going to come right this way. That's simply because the sail is acting as a way to create drag. And the drag is going to drag the sail and the boat behind it and everything. It's just going to pull it with it. Simple enough. And that's actually how those old square riggers worked. They had these big giant square sails that just caught the wind and pushed them downwind. Straightforward, goes downwind. Doesn't go upwind. Can go upwind. The upwind part is actually due to the keel. We're going to get into that later. Right now we're just looking at sails. So our simple sail here the side's going to be facing the front of the boat. This side's going to be facing. Oops, this side's going to be facing the back of the boat. Okay. When we're going downwind, the snowflake side is pointing forward, and it's just going to, you know, pull the boat downwind. When we're going upwind, so now the boat's going into the fan. It's going to be like this. It's going to be side to the wind. You can't go directly upwind with a boat because if you do, it just it turns into a big flag and nothing nothing happens. The way you harness the power of the wind is you give it a curve. So what am I saying with that? When you look at the sail like from the top view, if you have this being flat, it's just gonna flap, right? Like nothing really happens, it's just flapping around in the wind. Now if you give it a curve, you create what's called an airfoil. And airfoils, you see them on airplane wings, they're the easiest way to visualize it because they work really well, because they have to. Now sails are kind of the poorest design of an airfoil because they use a super, super thin foil. To get more power out of a foil, you want to have a thick wing. That way you have, you know, a nice big shape that's going to create a lot of lift and create a lot of power. And you now see this on these big fancy racing boats like in the America's Cup and all where they have these wing sails. And that is what they're talking about when they say a wing sail. It's no longer a thin piece of cloth, but instead an actual three-dimensional structure that's up. 
And if you're wondering why they haven't been doing them all these years, they've known it's better, but they didn't have the material science to actually make it happen. And now they finally do, and now we have hydrofoiling wing sailboats that can make it around the world. It's, it's pretty awesome with the world we live in. Let's get back to our basic sails that, you know, you have on your average day sailor. Nice flat sail, you give it a curve. What this curve does is it gives it power. Now, the power comes from a couple points. So the power of a sail comes from the curve that it generates. Now what happens when you create this curve is you're going to get a nice big belly in here. So this belly is actually what's going to create the power. The deeper the belly, the more power your sail makes. The flatter the belly, less power. So it's kind of the opposite. You see a dude that's ripped and has a nice flat stomach. He's really strong. You see a dude with a big beer gut. He's probably also really strong. Don't mess with either of them. But <laughs> with sails, flat belly, less power. Big thick belly, lots of power. And that's why if you look at a big spinnaker, it's got that huge belly in it. It's this big curve that hangs out there. And that's creating a ton, and I mean a ton, of power. And then you have your storm jib. And it's going to be a really small sail, but the important part is it's going to be a flat sail. It doesn't create as much power. What happens with this power? Well, a couple things. So on this side, the side that faces the boat, the, the stern side, which in our case is the non-snowflake side, this side is going to be under pressure because the wind is actually pushing on it. Our super fancy snowflake side is going to be under vacuum because the wind's actually going to be rushing past it super fast and it's going to be low pressure. So two things are happening. You have the wind pushing on the sail on this side, the non-snowflake side, and then the snowflake side is going to have the wind actually pulling it into a vacuum. So when I ask the question of, you see a sailboat sailing off into the sunset, is the wind pushing it or pulling it? The answer is both. Because on this non-snowflake side, it's pushing. On the snowflake side, it's pulling. And when that sailcloth is pulled, all the sheets and everything that's attached to it, which is your boat, is going to be pulled along with it. So that is how a sailboat can pull your boat even into the wind. So the trick to it is you need a nice belly that's going to generate power and that's going to pull and that's going to generate the power for your sails that will pull and push the boat in any direction. So going downwind it's going to be like this and then going upwind it's going to be like that. But in both cases you're going to have the curve in the sail and that is the ticket. So that generally explains how a sail works on a boat, and you understand now that the deeper the belly of your sail, the more power it's going to create. So why not just make giant deep-bellied sails like the spinnaker has on all your sails, and then you'll, you'll have tons of power and you'll go really fast. Well, that's the problem. In order for a sail to work, the air actually has to flow over both sides of the sail. Now in this case, we have our sail pointing into the wind, and it looks like you know we have our nice belly here, so, in theory, this should generate power and take us whichever direction we want to go. Upwind, downwind, whatever, the sail's creating power. The problem is, in order for a sail to work, you can't have air just on one side of the sail. You need it on both sides. So you're going to have air flowing on this side, which is going to be the side that's under pressure. And then you need air on the back side, which is the side that's under vacuum. So remember, this side it's being pushed, and this side it's being pulled. Now to get the air to flow on both sides evenly and, and well, that means that you can only point into the wind at whatever angle the front of your sail is leading into. So what that means is the sail needs to have air flowing in and out of the sail, like over both sides of it evenly, all the time in order to keep it flowing. If you have too much air on this side and not enough air on this side, it's not going to work. If you have too much air on this side, not enough over here, same thing, it's not going to work. So the angle that you can go into the wind depends on the leading edge of the sail. Okay? Now that we understand how a single sail works, let's look at going to windward, because that's the, the one that's kind of hard to wrap your brain around. Like going downwind's easy. That's it. Wind pushes on the back of the sail, boat follows. It's simple. It's like if you sit in a kayak and pick up a big bed sheet. 
Yeah, that's actually how I started sailing. I had a kayak, and I would hold the bed sheet up, and it would pull along. I was the mast, the boom, the yards. I, I was, I was the rigging. And when I was standing, I was standing rigging. So the sail is pointing into the wind, right? The boat's following. If we have a nice big deep belly, it's gonna point. It's gonna create a ton of power. But the problem is, if I'm pointing like this, you can see all the wind's going to hit on this side, none on the wind over here. And then what's going to happen is the sail's going to flop, because that's how it does. So what you need to do is turn this part down. So you can see that the leading edge can never be more than the wind angle. So if you have a nice deep belly like this, that's your angle. Like that, that's it. So this is going to be going downwind. So the wind's going to come over it evenly on both sides, flow, create a ton of power here, and then come out. Now this is going to work well for going downwind, because you can see the leading angle of, of the sail is pointing into the wind, but so is the back of the sail. Like, this is going this way, straight downwind. Now you want to start going upwind, but what you got to do is you have to change this angle. Let's give this another try. So here we have the single simple sail, just as it is. So we have the front of the sail, top of the sail and the back of the sail. This is a triangle. With everything on sailboats, I'm sure you know by now that everything has a name. On a triangle, in geometry class, you would have learned angle A, angle B, angle C, for example, and then side A, side B, side C. In sailing, they like to take it up a notch. So you have the front, which is called the tack, the back, which is called the clue, and then the top, which is called the head and then your sides that go from head to tack, that is your luff, from tack to clue, that is your foot, and then from clue to head, that is your leech. So looking at a sail on a boat, once again, you have your tack, your foot, your clue, your leech, your head, and your luff, and then back to your tack. That's a lot of names, and don't worry, it's it's only really important that you learn them. We're going to be looking at this, and the reason I have to go over these names is because there's a couple really important parts. So first off, the tack. It's an easy way to remember it is since it's at the front of the sail, it relates to your angle of attack. See what I did there? The angle of attack is the angle that your sail can approach the wind. So if we look at a sail from the top, it no longer looks like a big big thing like this, but instead it's really thin, and it'll be this guy. So this is looking down at the top, and this will be your luff, and this will be your leech. So front of sail, back of sail. Your angle of attack is the angle that the sail approaches the wind. So if your angle of attack is straight on, you're going to be creating uh, pretty much no power, because the wind's going to be approaching on both sides completely evenly. There's going to be no pressure gradient on one side or the other of the sail, no power happens. So to create power, what you do is you create an angle of attack. So you have to have some angle here, and then as you create that angle, air is going to flow over the sides of the sails, but at different rates. So on this side, the side that's under pressure, our, snow, our no snowflake side, this guy here, the wind's going to be hitting it directly onto it, and it's going to be pressure coming straight into it which is this. So it's going to be coming in with pressure and it's going to be pushing your sail. Now the other side, the wind's actually going to go even faster because it's, it's what it does. So the wind's going to be going even faster and it's going to be passing over this side and as it does that it's going to create a low pressure on this side which is our snowflake side over here, the outside of the sail. So when we do that we then have a higher pressure pushing the sail and a low pressure pulling the sail. Okay. So you have high pressure and low pressure. And what the high pressure is going to do, it's going to push the sail, and the low pressure is going to pull the sail. Now, when all these forces combine, they're pushing and pulling your sail, which is attached to your boat. So your boat is going to move along with the sail. So they're pushing and they're pulling, so that it's, it's all going. To create this ability to go upwind, you have to have an angle of attack, which means that you can't go straight into the wind because then you have no angle. It's, it's not going to work. So you need an angle of attack, and the wind comes in at different rates, and then 
pulls you along. And it's actually more like this for the angle. So it's always more wind on this side, less wind on this side, because otherwise the sail would just go bloop. You know, it's, it's how sails do. An easy way to visualize this on your actual sailboat is by your telltales, which are those little tufts of yarn that are on your sail that most people just ignore. Their job is to flutter around in the wind. So if the wind is streaming evenly on both sides, they will both be streaming. And you'll have on, you know, both telltales will be flying in a nice straight line. If it's not, then one of them's gonna go flapping wonky and you'll see and know something's up, you need to trim your sail better. And when you're trimming it, all you're doing is adjusting the angle that the sail is meeting the wind, and that'll change how the air flows over it. And if the air is flowing correctly, you're going to have high pressure and low pressure, and the air flows quickly over the sail and then pulls it along. So that is that is the idea. As you go building your belly in the sail, which is going to give you more power, you need to then adjust your angle of attack. Like if you do this, it's not gonna it's not gonna work because the air is coming in this way, it's just gonna flatten it out. So you need to turn like this, which means you're going downwind. And as you try and come further upwind, your angle of attack is going to get narrower and narrower because you're going more upwind. And you can only do that because you have a nice flat sail. I hope this setup didn't confuse you guys. My goal on this one was just to cover a sail and how they work and how they create power to move a boat. Because boats are really heavy. Like if you're ever at a pier and you push really hard on a boat and try and get it to move fast, it's not going to happen. But you put your sails up and they go really fast. My goal was to just show you guys how a sail works and like just the basic mechanics of a sail. And then later we'll be talking about sail angles and the interactions between the sails and where the sail is placed on the boat and how that affects how the boat's going to handle and work. And then what it's going to do to the boat. I know this one's pretty basic, that was my goal, was to just make it pretty straightforward and simple and just cover the, the basics of a sail. That way we can then look at the more advanced parts of how a sailboat works. But you can't really know how the whole system works without understanding how the unit works. So next time we're going to be talking about tensions on a sail. So we're going to be looking at hired tension, head stay tension, and sheets and their sheeting angles and see how does that affect the sail and give it the characteristics that you're looking for when you're setting up and trimming your sails. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.